Hey, what's up everybody, Josh here, and you may be wondering what's inside this gigantic box. Well, I guess you probably already know, you did click on the video. Anyway, inside is the HP NV32 all-in-one PC, and while I typically stick with laptop and desktop tower reviews, this thing caught my eye for a number of reasons. For instance, the 600 nit HDR display, NVIDIA RTX 2080, built-in Bang & Olufsen surround speakers, an HDMI out, and get this, an HDMI in, and really thoughtful features like a wireless charger for your phone built right into the stand. So normally a lot of those things would require extra peripherals on your desk, which obviously would clutter it up, and since the whole point of an all-in-one is to be super efficient and minimalist, this is the most worthy all-in-one I've ever seen. But I can't get too excited yet. Let's unbox this thing, run some benchmarks, and we'll see what we've got. All right. Oh, that is so big. All right, we have... What we got? Okay, we got the, uh, the mouse and keyboard here. This is a wireless keyboard with four AAA batteries. Looks like... And there's actually a little stand in the back of this keyboard, which I'll demonstrate later, where you can put like a tablet and a phone if you wanna like multitask. Really cool. Over here we have, let's see, this is our power cable and our power adapter, 330 watt power adapter. Oh, 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 look at that. That is sweet. Kind of like this sweet impact shirt from Into the AM. They've got all kinds of really cool psychedelic designs. If you want to check them out, I'll drop a link in the description below. And you can use code McDaris10 to get 10% off your order. So before we get too far into it, let me give you our specs. We got an Intel Core i7, 9700, 3 GHz, up to 4.7 with Intel Turbo Boost. We have integrated and discrete graphics. Our discrete is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 with 6 gigs of dedicated RAM. I think I said 2080 earlier, but you can get it in a configuration with that 2080. For the display, we have a 31.5 inch 4K IPS HDR display with a big old 600 nits of brightness, edged edge glass. It displays 98% of DCI-P3. We have 16 gigs of DDR4-2666 upgradable to 32 gigs. Unfortunately, not a lot of room to upgrade there. On the flip side, you do have two M.2 expansion slots, one for an SSD and one for wireless LAN. For storage, we have a 512 gig Intel SSD and also a 1 terabyte 7200 RPM drive for extra storage. Of course, we have gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi 5, and Bluetooth 5. So one of the first things I wanted to check out was these surround speakers. They're made by Bang & Olufsen, makers of premium speakers, and their stuff sounds really, really nice. And there's no exception here. These sound great watching movies and it doesn't actually say it in the specs but I kind of assumed they were 5.1 just by all the speakers but as far as Windows is concerned they're just stereo speakers. So what exactly is going on here? Well it turns out if you go to the Bang & Olufsen software you'll see Bang & Olufsen experience you can set it to movie and then HP immersive audio is enabled and what this does is simulates surround sound but Frankly, it does a really good job and it sounds great when you're watching movies. When it comes to CPU performance, we ran a Cinebench benchmark and our i7 was really snappy on the render. It was a little on the hot side though. One of our cores managed to get all the way up to 98 Celsius. Of course, as I've said in previous reviews, Cinebench does put the pedal to the metal on this, so it does take a minute for most machines to bring that temperature back down. At one point, it got down into the 70s, but I think it was just between renders. Uh, most of the time, it was averaging mid-80s. During our 3D Mark test, the CPU performed really well. Remember, our base clock is 3 gigahertz, and it managed 
4.5 throughout the test. You got a little bit of gaming performance here. You got 55 plus FPS on GTA 5, 60 plus on Fortnite at 1440p Ultra. Red Dead Redemption 2 came in under 30 FPS at 1080p Ultra. So you're not gonna be able to do any crazy gaming on this, but if you're a creative that's also a casual gamer, this is definitely an option, especially if you get that 2080 model. So as I mentioned earlier, you can use that slot on the back of the keyboard for a phone or tablet or both to multitask, which is really handy. And another really handy feature is the wireless charging. It's just that little point on the base of the machine. You just put your compatible phone on there and it charges it up. As far as the keyboard goes, this is a premium keyboard. It feels really nice to type on. The mouse, on the other hand, while it is a good mouse, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a standard three-button mouse. It's just not my favorite. It's, it's a pretty standard uh, three-button optical. In the very top, hidden inside the machine, is a pop-up webcam. This is a 5 megapixel webcam with dual field mics, really handy for zoom calls. And on the sides, we have our power button and USB. This is really handy to have these on the side and not just on the back. And on the other side, we have a 3-in-1 card reader and combo mic and headphone jack. On the back, you have Thunderbolt 3, USB 3.1 Gen 2, HDMI in and out, and of course, gigabit Ethernet. So the HDMI out is, of course, for a second display or TV, and the HDMI in is actually to use the NV as a display. And you can use the Bluetooth keyboard to connect multiple devices, whether it be that laptop you just hooked up, or a cell phone or tablet that's sitting on the back of the keyboard. So you might say, well, that's all great, but this thing is marketed to creators, so how does it do on that front? Well, it actually performed pretty admirably on our Photoshop and Premiere Pro tests in rendering a seven minute HD project 4K only took about two and a half minutes. Just keep in mind that's without effects and I'm working with a pretty low bit rate, but even so, this hardware is gonna get you pretty far. And one last really cool feature I'll mention, there's a shortcut button on the keyboard to activate pairing for the Bluetooth speakers so you can connect things like a smartphone to play music, which is super, super cool. This is one of the most versatile all-in-ones I've ever seen. Well, computers, I guess, I've ever seen. And it's definitely worth a look. If you wanna check it out for yourself, I'll drop a link in the description below. And don't forget to check out this sweet shirt from Into the AM. And don't forget, anytime you use one of my affiliate links, you help support the channel. But that's all I got for today, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.